Okay, so hello everyone. Thank you, Mike, for the introduction. So um, in this work, uh, we consider the setting where uh, n parties wish to compute uh, some functionality, which is represented by an arithmetic circuit over some finite field F. Uh, in the presence of a malicious adversary, we control less than half of the parties. Uh, our security model is security with a board, which means that the adversary may receive its output while preventing the honest parties from receiving their output. Uh, although in the honest majority setting, full security can be achieved, since we want to achieve high efficiency, we consider only this uh, slightly weaker uh, notion of security, but very reasonable um, for many applications. So this is the setting. and. The starting point of our protocol is two uh, very simple observations. So the first observation made by uh, Geng and et al. in a series of works is that protocols that are uh, many semi-honest protocols that are based on secret sharing are actually uh, not that weak. And they're actually secure up to additive attack, even in the presence of malicious adversary. Adversaries, which means that the only thing that the adversary can do is to add some value to the output, but nothing beyond that. Even if it's a malicious adversary and the protocol that is being run is secure only against semi-honest. Uh, and this was used in their work to construct circuits that are resilient to uh, additive attack. The second observation is that in the honest majority setting, which is our setting, uh, there exists many uh, highly efficient semi-honest protocol which uh, very uh, low computation cost and with communication that grows only linear with the number of parties. So using this observation and following uh, the work of Genkin et al, we present in this work a new protocol which is maliciously secured with a boat, which for large fields requires the parties to run a semi-honest protocol exactly twice. And when I say large field, I mean that the size of the field divided by three is larger than two to the security parameter. If we work over a smaller fields, then we will have to run the semi-honest protocol delta times, where delta is such that uh, this inequality is satisfied. And we present in our work two instantiations to our protocol. The first one is for the specific case of three-party computation, where we use uh, replicated secret sharing, and we present a protocol based on our uh, construction where each party is required to send just two field elements per multiplication gate. Uh, and the second instantiation for any number of parties, that, which is based on Shamil secret sharing, uh, where uh, we uh, present a protocol uh, where each party is required to send just 12 field elements per multiplication gate. Uh, the previous uh, best result was, I think, 42, if I remember correctly, field elements uh, per multiplication gate. So this is uh, a big concrete improvement. And later we'll also show some uh, experimental results and some running times. So this, is, this, of course, is for large fields. If we work over small fields, then the uh, communication grows linear with uh, the delta parameter. So this is our main results. Uh, now let's go into the details. So, but uh, before proceeding with some notation, so we use the standard notation for a sharing of a value x. We assume that the secret sharing scheme that is being used is, has linear properties, and, that, and therefore uh, only, when, uh, only for multiplication gates there is interaction between the parties. Uh, f mult is our uh, functionality that captures the idea, the, the idea of security up to additive attack, and the, which can be realized, as I said, as I just said, by many semi-honest multiplication protocols. And f front is a functionality to generate random sharing. And also here, the way to realize it depends on the secret sharing scheme that is being used uh, in the protocol. So these are our, uh, our building blocks, and let's go into the details. So we have uh, this functionality, f mult, which is secure up to additive attack, which means that the only thing that they can do is to add some value to the output. Now, achieving malicious security with a boat, uh, uh, when we use FMAD, eventually reduces the one basic question, which is how can the parties detect when cheating took place and, uh, and the value that was added to uh, the output is not zero? So th this is basically the question that we need to ask, and uh, now let's see how we, uh, 
answer this. So the main idea is as follows. So we start by generate some random sharing, some global random sharing R by calling uh, our functionality F front. And then for each wire of the circuit, we uh, have this invariant where the parties hold a pair of sharings on each wire, a sharing of the actual value that is on the wire and a randomized sharing of this value. This randomized sharing can be also viewed as a map of the value, which is exactly what uh, Daniel mentioned in the first talk, uh, exactly the same map that is used in speed, mascot, you know, and, and all uh, these family of uh, protocols. So the idea is that to maintain this invariance, so in order to achieve this, the parties start by randomizing the input wires of the circuit by taking each sharing on the input wire and multiply it with uh, the global random sharing R uh, by calling F mult. And then the parties go over the circuit in topological order and maintain this invariant. So for addition gates, the party can just locally add their shares. But for multiplication gate, gates, the parties need to interact. And this is done as follows. So uh, on each input wire of each multiplication gate, we have two, a pair of sharings. So the party is called F mult twice. The first time they call F mult to multiply the uh, uh, sharings of the actual values that are on the wires. And the second time, so this, uh, by this they, they have the uh, sharing of the output. And then they call F mult yet again in order to multiply the randomized sharing on the left input wire and the, actual, and the sharing of the actual value on the right input wire. And by this they have, and, and, and this is how they obtain the randomized sharing on the output. But of course, Fmult is not fully secure, right? It is secure up to additive attack, and the adversary may cheat in this computation. But what, what, what we can use, what we will see in a moment, that we can use the randomized sharing in order to verify the correctness of the sharing of the actual value. We will use the sharing of Rz in order to verify the correctness of Z. And this is done as follows. So the parties can take the, um, the sharing of Z, the sharing of the actual value on the wire, and call F mult yet again to multiply it with the random sharing R. And then we have another randomized sharing of this value that was computed in a different way. Now the parties call this uh, checking equality subprotocol that we have, okay, and, and check that the two randomized sharing that they have is our, our sharing of the same value. And the property that we have is that if cheating took place, then since R is unknown, and since we use FPAL, which is secure up to this attack, we can show that the probability that the equality holds and the honest parties uh, don't abort if cheating took place is negligible. So this is the main idea, but we actually can optimize it a little bit uh, more and use this, the, standard, the standard trick of uh, batch, batch checking. Instead of checking each multiplication gate separately, okay, so at the moment we have three calls to F mult for each multiplication gate, we can get rid of the last call to F mult for verification. So what we can do is instead, what, what we can do is to take the linear combination of the sharing of the value on each wire okay, by, uh, by first the parties uh, do some coin tossing and obtain these uh, alpha i's here, which are uh, public random values and then they can locally compute uh, this value, this linear combination, and then call F mult once to multiply it with the random sharing R, thereby obtaining uh, uh, this value. Then they can, they can take the linear combination of the randomized sharing on each value, and then call the checking equality protocol exactly uh, once for the entire protocol. So now instead of having verification for each multiplication gets separately, we have one verification for the entire circuit. Um, and the property that we have is that if cheating took place, uh, then the owner part is about with probability one minus three over the size of the field. So if the field is large, then three over the size of the field is uh, negligible. However, uh, this is the cheating probability is indeed uh, negligible. However, this, this optimization um, causes uh, a security problem. And the security problem uh, is caused by the fact that this last call to FMALT, this one call that we uh, do to FMALT in the verification step, is done after the um, random coefficients, these alpha, I, this alpha i's were chosen. 
And what we show in the paper is that in this one call to FMALT, the adversary can carry out an attack which allows him to learn some information about internal values from the fact that uh, the honest parties are both or not. So what we need here is that the, this um, random coefficient, these alpha i's, will be chosen only, uh, only after all the calls to FMALT have been concluded. Uh, this is achieved, this is solved by uh, doing the following. So now after, so after we computed the circuit and we have two pairs, a pair of sharings on each wire of the circuit, now we can open R and reveal its value to the parties. And then we can compute uh, here in step two, we can do local computation and um, proceed with the quality checking as before. Okay, so now uh, here in step two, all to compute local computation after we, we, the parties know alpha i and know R, and therefore, we don't need to call FMALT uh, even once in the verification step. And therefore, now it is fully optimized and secure. And we have the same property as before, that the cheating probability is negligible. And as you can see, we have eventually, we end up with a protocol where we need to call FMALT exactly twice for each multiplication gate. As you can see here, one for the real uh, circuit gate, if you, and one to compute the randomized um, uh, um, sharing. Okay, so this is, uh, what we've seen now is true for, is correct for uh, large fields. What happens when we move to, when we walk over smaller fields? So the straightforward uh, extension of our idea to small fields would be that instead of randomizing the uh, value once, we can now randomize it uh, multiple times. So instead of holding uh, two, a pair of sharings on each wire, now we will hold a tuple of delta plus one sharings on each wire. Each randomization is with a different uh, independent, uh, R, independent R. Okay, now uh, when we want to maintain this invariant, so when we compute multiplication gates, instead of calling FMAL twice, we will call it delta plus one times, once for the, for the multiplication of the uh, sharing of the actual values, and uh, delta more times in order to, to uh, obtain the randomized sharing on the output wire. And then we can run the verification step for each randomization separately. And since all the, the randomization are independent of each other, we have that the cheating probability for each verification step is three over the size of the field. And overall, the cheating probability is three over the size of the field uh, to delta. And then delta can be, um, can be chosen in order to achieve a, a certain, a desired level of security. However, when uh, this, Although intuitively this uh, looks uh, uh, correct, uh, the, when trying to, to prove this, uh, the proof fails. And I want to explain very briefly why. So if we look at our verification um, procedure, we can see that eventually everything almost is known in this verification step. R is revealed to the parties, it is known to all the parties, to the adversary, to the real world adversary, to the ideal world simulator. Alpha i is known. The only thing that is not known is the value of Z, the ZIs, the actual values that are on the wires. However, this, these values are known to the distinguisher. So the distinguisher knows exactly whether the equality that we check will hold or not. And it knows exactly if the honest party should abort or not. Now, the, simul the simulator does that, doesn't know that. Uh, so before we could say that, okay, so the simulation failed, but this happens with negligible probability because three over the size of the field is negligible. But now three over the size of the field is not, is not negligible anymore, so we cannot say, so, and we cannot say that the simulation fails with non-negligible probability. So the proof um, fails when we move to small fields, and we need to change something in our verification step in order for this to work. And the idea is that we need to keep something else secret in the verification step, so even the distinguisher won't know if the honest party should abort or not. And what we do here is that instead of do, coin, do some coin tossing to, um, to, to obtain the uh, random public alpha i's, we, now, we'll, we will now call a friend to receive a random, uh, a random sharings of these alpha i's. So alpha i's are kept secret now throughout the verification step. However, this looks from first glance like, like not such a good idea, right? Because now when we compute step three and in step four, we have here multiplication between shared values. Each time we want to multiply alpha i and zi, now alpha i is 
uh, is a shared value. So we need to call f mult each time we need to do that. So it looks like we need two more calls, two more uh, calls to f mult for each multiplication gate. So this doubles the this doubles the, um, the the cost of the protocol. But fortunately, we have a way to overcome this problem. And what I will show now is how we can compute this sum of products of shares at the cost of one multiplication, uh, at the cost of running one multiplication protocol. So, okay, so, and I will show it by, by an example, but using this example, it can be, uh, with this example, you can, you can see the, the, the idea, and this can, apply, can, this can be applied to, um, to many other uh, uh, cases. So let's assume, for example, that we work with Shamil's secret sharing. So we want to compute this sum of products of shared values. So in Shamir secret sharing, uh, each sharing is uh, points over a polynomial of degree t. Now if we work in a naive way, so we will look at each of the values that we want to, each two values that we want to multiply, and then run a multiplication protocol for each of them separately. So usually multiplication protocols uh, for Shamir secret sharing, for, uh, for Shamir secret sharing work, work as follows. So the parties start by locally multiplying their shares, and then they, have, then they hold a correct sharing of the result, but the problem is that they, this is a sharing uh, using a polynomial of degree 2t and not a degree t. So what the parties do is run some interactive protocol, which is eventually the main cost of the, of the entire multiplication protocol, where uh, they uh, do degree reduction, and then they have a correct sharing of the result with the correct uh, uh, degree. And then they can sum all the results they have and obtain uh, a sharing of the sum of products. Now, the very simple but very powerful idea is that we can reverse the order here. Now, we can start with the same way. Each party locally multiply their shares. But now, let's sum the results now before we do the degree reduction. And now, we will have a correct sharing of the sum of products, but with degree 2t. And then we can run the interactive protocol for degree reduction only once for the entire sum of products. So this is very simple, but very powerful. And by doing this, we can see that we can uh, compute the sum of products of shares, doesn't matter, doesn't matter how many shares we have here, at the cost of, uh, eventually at the cost of one single multiplication, because eventually the interactive protocol is the, the main, the main uh, bottleneck of all, this, all, all the multi multiplication protocols. So if you go back, so this idea, so I, I, I presented it using Shamir secret sharing, but this can be uh, easily applied to, to many other secret sharing schemes that work in the very same way. So going back to our multiplication step, now we can see that we can compute uh, these sum of products, the sum of products here and the sum of products here, we can compute it uh, at the cost of one single call to f mult of the cost of one, uh, one single execution of our semi-honest multiplication protocol. So eventually, when we amortize it over the entire circuit, this is eventually nothing, and we are left with the same uh, um, cost as before as, as, uh, we, as uh, uh, of two calls to f mult for each multiplication gate. There's one little thing here that we need to call f rand because alpha, we have alpha for each multiplication gate, so we need one call to f rand. But this is not too bad. Eventually, we don't need to call f mult uh, more times for each multiplication gate. So this is the idea for, uh, this, so this is the verification step when we uh, work over small fields. Another small advantage that, advantage that uh, this um, and verification procedure has is that now we can, before we had to open R because we had some security problem, now because alpha is, is kept secret, we don't have this problem anymore, so we can keep R also as a secret. This has advantage when we, for example, compute a reactive functionality or some, or some uh, ongoing computation when re we release output and continue with the computation. So if we open R, we will have to randomize, re randomize the, the, all the values on the, of the circuit each time we release an output. If R is kept secret, we don't need to do that, so uh, it's a, there is a small advantage, advantage if, we not, uh, if, we do, if we don't open R. So to sum up what we've seen till now, so we've seen two protocols, one that is uh, suited for large fields, where the amortized calls per multiplication gate is 
is two calls to a smalt, and a protocol that uh, can work also for small fields where the amortized cost per multiplication gate is one plus delta calls to F smalt, and delta calls to F front. If we, uh, of course, uh, work on large fields with this protocol, then delta is just uh, equals one, so it is almost the same as uh, the first protocol. So these are, our, these are our two protocols, our two constructions in, uh, in our paper. And now I will finish with showing some experimental results. So as I said at the beginning, we have two instantiations in our protocol, one uh, for three parties using replicated secret sharing and one for any number of parties using uh, Shamir secret sharing. And here in this table, you can see uh, the way we uh, uh, instantiate each of the building blocks of our protocol for each of these uh, secret sharing schemes. So for example, if you use Shamir sequence sharing, so we have a protocol that which is which uh, realizes F mult, which is basically secure up to a digital attack, which requires each uh, party to send six elements per gate. The way that we realize F rand, our protocol to generate random sharings, requires each party to send two field elements um, per gate. So. Um, uh, two field elements plus four gates for, uh, uh, running for execution of a front. So this is our building blocks for each of these uh, secret sharing schemes. And we uh, examined our uh, protocol by running a very large circuit of one million multiplication gates with different depths. You can see them here from 20 depths up to 10,000 uh, uh, layers. And here you can see we ran it to different number of parties from three up to 110, and the execution time is in milliseconds. So we'll highlight two results. As you can see, we can compute one million gates with depth 20 and three parties in only uh, 390 milliseconds. And we can compute uh, 100, uh, so 110 parties can compute one million gates in just about 8.2 seconds. So our protocol performs very well. This is, uh, um, these results are when the parties are in the same region. What happens when we move uh, to uh, one configuration? So here uh, the parties are in three different regions, uh, which are very far away uh, in the world. And here we uh, run only two uh, circuit depths and up to 50 parties. Obviously, here the, the uh, time is uh, increased by much because obviously this kind of protocols for, uh, that are based on secret sharing requires many rounds of communication. So um, obviously, it's, it's, uh, when the parties are, uh, are not closely located, obviously this performs, uh, this is uh, not as, as, as good as before. As you can see now, three parties can compute one million gates in three seconds, not, three, not before it was 300 milliseconds. And 50 parties can compute one million gates um, in 128 seconds before it was, uh, I think, four or five seconds for 50 parties. But eventually, as you can see, our protocol can perform very well in the, in, uh, um, in, uh, and can perform very well and can be, and can be used to solve uh, real world applications. And with that, I will conclude my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>